Reading can expand your vocabulary in wonderful ways. When you're lost in a great story and come across a word you don't recognize, you probably concentrate more on what it means than how it sounds in your head. And you might not be able to tear yourself away from the page to check the pronunciation. We asked some of our B team members what words they learned from reading at an early age and didn't realize they were mispronouncing until years later. To help them out, and maybe you too, our official pronouncer, Dr. Jacques Bailey, took that list straight to Merriam-Webster unabridged to offer these correct pronunciations. The first word is segue. Now when you see this word, of course, you probably think of that fever called ding, but how do you pronounce that? Turns out that one can be pronounced as dengi, dengid, dengi, sometimes dengu. So you might think segue, but it's actually segue, segue. The next word is vehemently. Now I'm told that I put a little tiny H sound in there after the V, vehemently. That's a big H sound. And the dictionary shows no H sound, so it should be vehemently, vehemently. Now the next one, genre. So this is one of those funny words that came from French and for some reason, just decided to stick with the French pronunciation. Genre or genre. Now the genre is a little bit anglicized, but if it were really gone English, it would be gener or genre. Uh, but it sticks with that French. It has that French feel, that French je ne sais quoi of genre or genre. The next word, posthumously. This is a word I just can't imagine mispronouncing because I'm used to it. But there are a lot of variants. There's posthumously, there's posthumously, there's posthumously, and there's posthumously. So how do I say it? I usually say posthumously. Oh, this next one is great. My son thought it was epitome because he'd never heard it pronounced but it's epitome, and it's because it's from a Greek word that is pronounced epitome. It has a long E or A sound at the end, epitome. And yet we pronounce it epitome. So it's sort of got anglicized, but not all the way to epitome. So we have epitome, epitome, epitome. Then the next one, another French word that really has not gone native English. It's still pronounced like the French. Faux pas, faux pas. It's one of those where the plural is no different in French. So a faux pas in the French in plural is faux pas and in English too. So you can make a bunch of faux pas or you can have just one faux pas and it's pronounced the same way and spelled the same way, a false step. What words have stumped you while reading? Share in the comments and maybe we'll feature you in our Word Roundup with Dr. Bailey.